I met a really nice guy called Jeff into a resort I went on holidays with my friends to. I loved to just lie down and relax and feel the peaceful atmosphere all around me. I loved how the island looked when I looked it up online, but somehow it even exceeded my expectation. We were enjoying our time during the day because he was working nights, then had to get to sleep for a few hours. We were really enjoying the sun, so it was kind of cool him having the day off. He looked so cool and had blonde hair and wore sunglasses. My friends Sarah and Judy went off with other guys they met, so it was just as well I met Jeff or I'd be on my own in this resort. I actually wouldn't mind, only for there being a serial killer breaking into people's apartments and murdering them in their sleep. One girl survived and told the police that he was wearing all black and some sort of ski mask or scarf or something, but she noticed something very strange about his eyes. The police wondered did he wear contact lenses, or for some strange reason was that really the colour of his eyes. They couldn't even draw up a sketch of the serial killer, as all they had to go on was he had strange red eyes. Me and Jeff didn't let a serial killer loose on the island ruin our fun, so we continued to have as much fun as we could, including surfing. It was so beautiful, feeling the breeze while going along the water on the surfboard. When we got back, I was watching the evening news. It was about the killer. I went to fetch a towel from the shower and accidentally walked in on Jeff. He froze when he saw me and looked right at me with eyes that were the color red. Thanks for watching the Assassin Rapper and if you enjoy the content then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new content. I was watching TV one night when something came on the news that disturbed me so much. There was a killer killing people and broadcasting it live on the internet. It was broadcasted on the dark net and the shocking thing about it was that every time there was a live feed of someone being executed, the views counter went up and up. You couldn't see the views, but the killer was showing his analytics in one video and from start to end of broadcast in about under 3 minutes, he got 100,000 views. I was wondering what type of sick people in the world would want to watch some innocent person being executed live online. I came across a message board one night and got speaking to some girl in Utah and we came up with an idea, somehow, some way we will try to catch the killer. We eventually built up a solid team of five. We studied the footage as gruesome as it was to come up with any details. We studied what the room looked like. Were there any telltale signs of what part of the world the killer was in? or even what state if they were in the same country as me. We were all from different states, but shared the exact same goal, to bring this killer to justice. The media nicknamed him the Streaming Killer, 
as he streamed all his murders live on the dark web. I gathered everything I could find, and we all shared what we came up with. We hit the jackpot in one video, as the killer seemed to have missed out in something really significant in giving away his location, or else he was just teasing us, playing a game of cat and mouse, wanting us to catch him, daring us to catch him. The information was the Space Needle in Seattle. That was in the background, and by using Google Maps we traced where the video was being filmed to exactly the right street. We'd come up with a plan to tell the police, but then we decided not. We decided to knock on the door that we most expected it to be, and see what happens. We would ask is there a Jack Smith living there, any excuse to see who answers. I knocked on the door, and we could hear footsteps from the other side. We all stood in anticipation, wondering who was going to answer. There was an elderly woman on the other side, who looked like to be in shock or awe, and she stared right into my eyes. I was wondering, why was she so surprised to see me? She seemed to have ignored everyone else. Suddenly I jumped as she hugged me and said, Oh sweetie, I thought you were killed or something. You never go more than a day without telling me where were you. Where were you? I told her, what? She must be mistaking, I don't know her. After a while, when she was certain, I lost my memory. She told me that she'd take me up to my room. She took me up to my room while the others waited downstairs. When I looked in, I could see the space needle across from the view from the window, just as it was seen in the video. Then it hit me like a Mac 10 truck. I was in an accident, but I didn't go to the hospital, as I was just after killing the last person who was in the video while my mom was away. My memory came flooding back to me. It was me who was playing cat and mouse with the others and I realized it was me who was the streaming killer. The only memory that stood with me the whole time was I was trying to catch the streaming killer because I was obsessed with it. But the key point of what I forgot was I wasn't only trying to catch the streaming killer, I was playing cat and mouse, finding out how far I could go, leading them to the trap, to catch me, the streaming killer. But now, what am I going to do, with my mother standing right in front of me, and four people downstairs, wondering, where is the streaming killer? Hello everyone, you are watching Channel 6 News live from outside the killer that was branded the streaming killer by the media for the brutal killings the killer streamed live on the dark web. The killer is a 45 year old white Caucasian male that lived with his mother in Seattle, Washington. He was recognized none other than by himself. The story takes a turn after turn when the man whose name is Martin Scott was suffering from disassociative disorder. This has been made clear by a diary that was found in the killer's bedroom, where he describes different experiences from different people. The killer has a history of multiple personality issues, and two of the most popular ones he used during the killings were himself the killer and a shocked bystand or witnessing it all online. It is not yet made clear did he actually separate the reality from the personality, but was it just all a game to him? It is unclear, there is so much unfolding as we report this to you live. The killer is at large after killing his mother and four of his friends who apparently helped him catch the killer, which ultimately was himself. But after all that, he is still at large. Anyone with any leads are urged to contact your local police department or the FBI. Tim Sampson, Channel 6 News, Seattle.